this. You're alive for a purpose. I know you think you're just here to show up, put your time in. A lot of people are. But God has a purpose, and there's a reason. If you are a guest under my voice or listening by radio or wherever you're at, there is a reason you are here today. Not because I'm your pastor and my preaching. I preach because I am called by God to preach. So whether there's an audience or whether there's a tree waving its limbs, yeah. Yeah. you can preach. Okay, so I want to give you a word that I really believe that, that God spoke into my heart. And um, I know God is in this place, but before I go any farther, I want to tell you how good God's been. I mean, y'all, I know y'all know that. How many of y'all showed up the last couple of weeks, just one night, two nights, or whatever, to be a part of this two weeks deal? Man, thank y'all. Man, thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that. You know what that shows me? I'm going to be honest, I'm going to square you up. You want more. Because it takes a commitment to say, yes, I'm going to be there. You know, I'm going to be there. I'm tired. And I told Dana, I said, here's the deal. I said, after, after I preach today, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take, well, take a nap after I do this one thing. I'm going to fill my bathtub up with Dyke Mountain Dew. <laughs> and old Rafferty is going to get in there and backstroke. Amen? And uh, so, man, I, I'm telling you, the second and third day had headaches and withdrawals and everything else. And... Got good after that, Brother Bob, and then about the seventh or eighth day, here it come back again, and I'm like, Lord, give me a do. <laughs> and he said, not until you do what I ask you to do. <laughs> See what I'm saying? There's benefits. Now, I, I got a word, I really believe, but Steve Ayers called me seven times. Seven times means seven means perfect and complete. I'm into that numerology. I'm into that number stuff. Wore me out. I don't know. Y'all got to go home uh, uh, Wednesday night. <laughs> I got whipped. I got thrown under a chair. Ayers wore me out. I mean, wore me out. He called me back when we left. I talked to that joker going, as he was going all the way back to Bowling Green. <laughs> so I didn't, get, I didn't get to bed about 2 o'clock that morning, but praise the Lord, hallelujah, anyhow. And, uh, but here's what Steve called back and told me that he wanted me to share with this church. I want you all to listen to me. Dr. Steve Ayers said these words. He said, you tell that church not to stop. Listen to me. You tell that church that, he lo- that I love them, but much as I love them, God loves them more. You tell those people what they're doing is that you're doing the right things. You're so hunting. You're so winning. And I know that has become an easy believism in this world, but that's the problem with the churches today. They're not hungry for souls like they once were. And Steve told me to tell uh, the the leadership in this church, he is willing to come back, now listen to this, and undergird us and help us get to that next level. Now that's a man of God. That is a man of God right there. So we're going to keep growing and growing and doing and more and more and more, and it's going to get uncomfortable, uncomfortable, and uncomfortable. So you need to make your mind up, are you in or you out? Are you in or out? Because here's the thing. We may, we may not have the right color carpet on the walls for you. You may not get your parking spot. You may not get your seat. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about that lost person out in that world that's going to come through these doors and get saved. If you get to that point, you become dangerous. I said, Steve, how in the world do you pastor 5,000 people? Here's the deal. He said, they're not babies. He said they're grown up. They've caught the vision. They, they love people. They're so winners. And when we get to that point, you know what's going to happen, coach? Everything changes. We'll grow and we'll be in the center of God's will. Because nobody loves souls more than Jesus Christ. Amen? Let me get to this word. I want to I I I give it to you. I'm going to share one thing with you. Yes, sir. I told you, I, I saw my son this week and we had a good time talking. But, uh, you know, the, the opposite of what you just said is, is just business as usual. And he's disappointed with his church. They baptized one person last year. Wow. One. One just person. Just the opposite of what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way churches are going today. Right. Just right. get in, put right. your time in, yeah. put your time in, go home and so. Yeah. That is, but that is not God. That is not God. Get that mentality out of your mind. 
Because I'm telling you, there's 48,000 Southern Baptist churches, and only, listen to this, 39,000 of them reported two baptisms last year. That's not church. Then his son's church, North Carolina, one baptism all last year. That is not church. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, that's not church. God says, give me 3,000 one day, 5,000 next day. The first church had 8,000 members. And you say, I don't like a big church. You would have a hard time at the church of Jerusalem. You're going to have a hard time in heaven. Because there is a number that no man, hallelujah, can number. And we get to be there every day with them. Amen. Get that small stuff out of your mind. Get the, I'm telling you, God's doing something. He is doing something, and I feel that. Today, I want to preach a word out of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, and Bobby, I started thinking about how in the world can I sum up 13 days? All that word that we got, all that preaching we got, all that praying we got, all those miracles we've seen. How in the world can you put in one sermon all that stuff? And I said, I can't, so that's why I'm going to preach you three sermons. Three. <laughs> so, so this is going to be a series, all right? But I titled today, and I want you all to write this down because this is for you. I'm your pastor, the lead man of this church, and I'm telling you today, this is a word just for you. Now listen to me. The title of this message is, I am the one, this is the place, and now is the time. I am the one, this is the place, and now is the time. Genesis chapter 18, a very unique scripture. But I just, I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> so I just like it. And so I said, man, this is going to be great. It's a very unique scripture. But God was talking to a young lady by the name of Sarah. She was well up in her age. And uh, God says, you're going to have a son. His name is going to be Isaac. And you've got to realize that Sarah at this time was 89 years of age. Whoa, 89. You see, what to us, what we think is impossible, it is possible with God. This woman's 89 years old, and I want to give you the scripture that God gave to her and her response. So listen to this. In verse 13, Genesis chapter 18, if you're there, say amen. amen. This is good. I dedicate this sermon to you guys today. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, <laughs> what she is, Well... Will I really have a child now that I am old? She laughed and said, Will I really have a child that, that I, now that I am old? And I love this, verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now listen, you've got to answer that question right now, whatever you're going through. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything, I'm going to say it again, is anything, Bobby Jean Walker, too hard for the Lord? For the Lord. Now the religious people will sit there and go, well, no, everything's good. All things are possible through Christ. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4:13. We got that. But there comes a time, Courtney, that you got to make that a reality in your life. You got to start walking in it. Watch this. You got to quit reading the Bible and you got to start becoming the Bible. The Bible must become a reality to the Elkhorn Baptist Church and you personally in your life before you'll ever do anything for the Lord. That's the problem with the churches today. They'll say, hey amen, do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? It can God do all things? Hooray, pastor, he can! But not in my life. So today I dedicate this sermon over you. You said these words, is anything too hard for the Lord? Watch what he said, I will. You need to mark that down in your Bible. He said, I will. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say based upon you. He said, I will return to you at what? Yeah. Underline that in your Bible. At the appointed time. At the appointed time. Watch this. Next year. Next year. Think about this. God told this young lady named Sarah, he said, Sarah, you're going to have a male child. His name is going to be Isaac. He's going to bless people. His father is called Abraham. He will be the father of all nations. And he said these words. He said, listen to me. I will be back, and will I find you still faithful? 
I will be back at the appointed time. The reason why I was appointed, because it takes nine months to have a what? A baby. God says, so this time next year when I see you, you will have the promised seed. It's a good word. Listen to this. He said, you, you will have a son. Verse 15, Sarah was afraid. Boy, isn't that the gospel truth? God would give us a promise, and we back down because we're afraid. God will tell us all things are possible with through him, and we'll back down because we're afraid. God gives us promise after promise after promise in the Bible. We know, we say we believe in God, but then we say, is there anything too hard for God? No, there's not. But, we start using the word but. He said this, Sarah was afraid, so she what? How many of you know fear will make you lie? Fear will make you lie. Being afraid will make you lie. But when you start <laughs> squaring up and saying, yep, this is what God said. This is who I am. This is what's going on in my life. I'm not afraid no more. God said it. Hallelujah. And he'll back it up. I believe that because God said it. I, can the Lord do anything? Yes, he can. He already has. He already has. Every perfect gift comes from above. I've said this time and time again, Jenna. God, we're not waiting on God. God is waiting on Elkhorn. God is waiting on you. And God is waiting on me. So here's what I wanted to give you today. Said this word, but he said, yes, she said, I didn't laugh. She lied to God. I didn't laugh. And God said, I love God. He'll just square you right back up. Yes, you did laugh. Yes, you did laugh. I just wonder how many people today God has told you something in your spirit and you knew it at one time in your life that God told you that, but today you're sitting back going, no, I just don't know if it was from the Lord. Let me go ahead and tell you something. You are laughing in the face of God. That's a hard word, but that's a true word. So I started thinking about what stood out to me the most in this, and it was Sarah laughing. It was Sarah laughing. When I study the scripture on, the, on this word laugh, everybody listen to me, laugh, it means these words. In the Hebrew, laugh means that I count myself unfit and undone. So when Sarah laughed, what she was saying was these words. She said, God, I'm unfit, I'm undone, I'm 89 years old, it cannot happen to me. And the next thing you know, I love what the Lord said, it's anything. Can God do, he can do all things. The reason a lot of people and a lot of Christians and a lot of churches today are not moving forward because here's what they're saying. Are y'all ready for this? I am not the one. <laughs> this is not the place. And it most certainly is not the time. A lot, listen to me. A lot of you are not getting your prayers answered because what you're doing, you're sitting there, God gave you a word. How many of y'all know God's at Elkhorn Baptist Church? How many of you know that, man, we've seen some amazing things the last two weeks? And even before that, we've seen great things even before that because that's how much God loves us. How many of you know God's not through with Elkhorn Baptist Church? So there's no excuse why we cannot sit here today and say, you know what? I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. Amen? Come on, praise him. you got to believe this sometime in your life. you got to believe that you're the one. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm the one. Come on, tell them again, I am the one. And all the husbands said, I told you that a long time ago. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But you know, what, you know what changed in me? I finally got the revelation, finally got the revelation of this. And I, I've been pastoring for 16 years, and I'm not going to lie to you, man. Anybody can grab a Bible, get three points and a benediction and go home. But I have truly found I've got as much as God as I want. I have truly found that people are going to do what people want to do. I can preach till I'm blue in the face, but until you get this point, I am the one. This is the place, and now is the time you will sit still in a little blue chair for the rest of your life. And then someday somebody will stand over your casket and they'll lie. They'll lie. Well, they were sold out. I don't know how many funerals I've been to in my life. And I've stood up there and I've heard more lies at funerals. How many of you know every person that dies in the Central Kentucky News Journal, they're affiliated with a church? And Barry, that's, not no, that's no truth to that. 
They don't go to church. They don't serve God. They're not living for the Lord. They're acting like a heathen and talking like a heathen. Hate the church. Hate the people. Nothing but hypocrites there. But boy, when they die, everybody's saved. I went to a funeral one time, and Ed, and they pulled me to the back. And this little mama come up to me, and she said, I'm not going to mention no names. She said these words. She said, now, he was a good man. And boy, he, he worked hard. He done good in his life. And I asked you this morning, I said, was he born again? Was he saved? Did he know Jesus Christ? Said, Listen, I don't care how much money's in your back pocket. I don't care what church you go to. All I'm concerned about when you die is your first breath is going to be in heaven or is it going to be in hell? That's my only question I have for you today. And you sit there and go, oh, Brian, I'm going to heaven. Let me ask you something. What have you done with your heaven on earth? What have you done with your heaven here on earth? I am the one. This is the place, and now is the time. And until you get this word, you're going to be like Sarah. You're going to be old. How many of you know you're going to grow old or die? Amen. You know what I love about Brother Tom? Yeah, he's loud. Yeah, he says, oh, glory. But I'm telling you, one day, one day, if, if Tom, if you go see Jesus, yeah. I, I'm going to miss that old glory. I'll, I'll, miss, I'll miss things like that in my life. So here's what I'm telling you guys is this. Until you get this revelation, and God's got to give it to you. I can preach it all day, but God's got to give it to you. You will remain the same. Dr. J. Vernon McGee said these words. He said, that's the problem with the church today. He said, they think they're undone. They think they're unfit. They don't think they're worthy. They don't think they've had two or three church splits. How many of you know, watch this. Let's just bust this lie all to pieces. Elkhorn is stronger today than ever before. I really believe that with all my heart. And yes, we've went through things in our life. Watch this. If you keep living in the past, you'll never go forward. If you stay well, back in 1995, we did this. Here's what I got to say. Back in 1995, there was not 500 salvations, 500 baptisms, blue chairs sitting everywhere. Let's get on and go forward. Amen? Somebody praise me. We just need to go forward, 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 forward. Come on. Forward, forward. Somebody say, I'm going forward. Yeah, I'm going forward. I'm not looking back. What if I, oh, never mind. I thought, I thought about Abraham. What kind of excuse could Abraham give, give for not serving the Lord? Abraham was a liar. He lied. He said that his wife was his sister. He lied. He was a liar. And I thought about Abraham standing before God saying, Lord, uh, you can't use me because I'm a liar. And I can just hear God say, I know that, but you're the one. And I thought about, I thought about Moses. My goodness, Moses, he, he stumbled, he couldn't talk well, and he said, I need help, and this, that, and the other. And God says, my God, Moses, I, I, I set a bush on fire. <laughs> How much more do you need from me? And Moses said, I just can't talk well, Lord. And all of a sudden, God says, I know you can't talk well, and I know you got some faith issues, but Moses, you're the one. I thought about Noah. Noah was a drunk. Oops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was a drunk. He built, you know what? I'd probably took a drink too after staying on an ark with your wife and your family for 120 years and this, that, and the other. And my God, when you see son, you're sitting there going, my God, where's it at? You say, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm just being, I'm being honest with you this morning. You've got to quit looking at your life and saying what you used to be. And there's got to be a transitional point in your life and saying, God is birthing an Isaac in me. God don't want my Ishmaels. God don't want your leftovers. God wants your Isaac. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants your Isaacs. God wants your Isaacs. And I, th I thought about Peter. Peter cursed God. Literally cussed Jesus Christ out. And I'm sitting there going, oh gosh. What do you do with that? What did he do with the man that stood up and cussed God to his face? And then denied him three times. But I love what Jesus did. When Mary went to the tomb, 
he, she was there, and she was, a matter of fact, the ladies were the first ones to tune. The men were having a coffee break or prayer meeting or something, I don't know. But the women, she showed up first. And I love what God said. Mary seen him. She said, oh, hang on. i got to go back, and i got to tell people what I've seen. That's what we need. We need to, we need to go and tell church. We, I, I, let me tell you what I've seen, what I've heard, and what's happened in my life. And the Lord went, and then all of a sudden, Jesus looked at me and said, hey, hey, Mary, don't forget Peter. See, a lot of you under my voice and my teaching today, you have thought, you're thinking that God has forgotten you because you base your Christianity upon your performance. My God. You, you, you base everything that you have done in your life on your record, how good you have survived, what your score was in college, how good of a man you are, how much you give to the church. If you're a Sunday school teacher or a deacon or a pastor, but let me go ahead and tell you, God wants to use you just as you are, and God will make you more than you are because he is God. Amen? He'll use you just like you are. Quit making excuses. I am the one. Everybody say, I am the one. This is the place, and now is the time. I thought about these people. In Genesis 18, 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? I like what he said, I will return at the appointed time. Listen to me. I want to help you really quick, okay? One of the hardest lessons in Christianity is waiting. Listen to me. I am preaching to myself right now, and I'm, I'm Daniel, I'm learning, okay? Just work with me. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. One of the hardest things in life is to wait upon the Lord. My God. Because I want to put my two hands, and I want to help him. Now, y'all may not. I may be preaching to my own self. Preach it, Brian. It's good, though. And so what God really wanted me to tell you in here today, and me also, was on, on God's appointed time, when we are ready, when we are spiritually in position, we will birth our, we will birth our Isaac. Somebody receive that? Whenever you're ready, and when God is on time, he is appointed for you for such a time as this. I look back over my journey. There was no way in this world I was ready to pastor Elkhorn Baptist Church. Oh, I thought I was. But what God had to do to me was pick me up out of a comfortable situation and place me in a messed up situation, 45 minutes away from you guys, missing you like crazy. But on God's appointed time, hallelujah, he birthed Isaac in me. He brought me back. He stood me up, and he saved me from all the dilemmas of these things I'm going on in my life. Listen to me. Some of you are not ready. This is a hard word. You are praying for something you're not ready for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Lord, give it to me, give it to me. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I'm going to go deep with you this morning if that's okay with you guys. I prayed a prayer one time, sis, that God, I, I want more of your spirit. I, I want all. And God says, you got it. Now listen to me, I'll teach you. But he said, on my appointed time, I will grow you in the Lord. I will grow you in the Lord. I will grow you in the Lord. And so now, as I am receiving more of Jesus Christ in my life, because why? It's not that I've got more of him. He's got more of me. So listen to me. You say, Brian, I want more. Are you ready for it? Are you really ready for more of God. That's why some, watch this. It's not that people's got more of God. You see some people who are worshiping with hands up or hands down. You don't have to have your hands up. Y'all watch me. You don't have to have your hands up. You don't have to be slain in the spirit. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to walk on water. Because why? The same God that was in Peter is the same God that is in you. Amen? And when you're appointed time, God will raise you up. But listen to me, never, ever, ever start making fun of people who, who have arrived at that point, that season in their life. Some people like worshiping with their hands up. Some people like Brennan, he loves just dancing like a wild man. But you better hope I don't hear nothing come out of your mouth. 
Well, why, why, why don't y'all make him sit down? Why don't y'all do this? Why don't you stand up and dance with him? Hallelujah. Why don't you just get up and say, God, today I'm going to get undignified. Today, Lord, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to break loose today. I'm being honest with you this morning, transparent as a pastor. I am the one. This is the place. This is the place. No other church in history can do what Elkhorn's going to do. Because God's handprint, his fingerprint is upon us. And if you're listening to me, one day, one day, we will look back and we'll say, y'all remember in 2013 when that crazy preacher and his associates and his deacons said, let's have a 13-day of first fruits. You may not see it now working in the atmosphere. But I'm telling you what God is birthing in Elkhorn Baptist Church can only come from Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual birthing what God is doing. It's a spiritual birthing what God. God says, I will return on my appointed time, and Sarah, you will have a son. And what God spoke in my heart, Elkhorn Baptist Church, and if you are a guest in here, you are you're at the right place at the right time to receive this word on God's appointed time. On God's appointed time. I don't know who I'm ministering to, but listen to me. It's not about you. I know you've been praying for certain things for a long time. But you know why? Listen to this. God just so good he's speaking. Can y'all bear with me just for a moment? You know why people relapse? Because they've done it for mama. They've done it for daddy. They've done it for the church. They've done it for the preacher. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus... The reason why some people don't re relapse is because God got a hold of that situation, brought it out of their life, and they'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Be patient with people. Because you know what? If I were to tell you my story, I probably wouldn't be your preacher right now. I remember we was at the first church where I was at. They was going around the table, and they was talking about, should they ordain me? Should they not ordain me? He's divorced. He's, a, you know, all this, all that. That's why I hate business meetings. Never, first of all, never seen anybody get saved in a business meeting. All I've ever seen in a business meeting is stinking problems. And if you trust your leadership, let us run the church. If not, fires. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's another angel moment. There comes a time you've got to trust who's leading. And if you don't trust who's leading... Won't you get up and lead? Well, preacher, I'm just not qualified. No, you're acting like Sarah now. I'm too old. I'm too young. Excuses. I can't lead. You know what? I never tell Greg Ford how to play the guitar. Never. Never. I never tell. I, I don't choose the songs for Sunday morning. You know why? Because I'm not a worship pastor. Y'all getting this? I am the one. This is the place, and now is the time. Flight 903, this is a true story. You can check it out. Flight 903 took off in Washington, D.C. with 92 people, 92 passengers on that, on that plane. And Flight 903, it took off, and it crashed into the 14th Street Bridge, and it dumped all 92 passengers out in cold water into a river. And the media and the TV crews, they showed up, and you know how they are, man. They're looking for something that they can just talk about. And the cameras were flying, and the media was everywhere. And this man, this man, who was caught in traffic behind the bridge, he seen what was going on, that there were people drowning. And there were people saying, help me, help me, help me. And one man decided to get out of his truck. He decided to jump into the cold water. And one person after another person, one man, and the camera was on him. They was following him. He was like a madman. He would go down and jump in and pull them out and rescue them and lay them on the ground and say, I'll be back. He had an Arnold Schwarzenegger moment. And all of a sudden, he ran back in. He jumped into the water. He pulled another man out, and he pulled him up there. He said, I'll be back. He had five souls saved from rescuing them from cold water. Now, listen to this. The cameras, the media was everywhere. True story. And all of a sudden, this wife and the two kids turned on the television. And these two little children started watching this man 
who was going back and forth, back and forth, swimming and diving and rescuing and putting them on the banks. I'll be back. This little boy looked up and he said, that's daddy. And that mama said these words. She said, well, I don't know. She said, I wouldn't put it past your daddy. He's been known to do a few things like that. And all of a sudden, the camera weaved around Terry, and they got a face shot of this man of God. And it, all of a sudden, tears started coming down that mama's face. She said, that is my husband. That is your daddy. And what God sparked in me, Dixie, was like nothing never before. He said, if the church would start saying, I am the one to save and to rescue the perishing. I am the one that will stand up and drive a van, teach a class, preach the word, sing a song. I am the one. This is the place. And now, hallelujah, is the time to serve the Lord. Somebody praise him in the house. Come on, now's the time. We got to rescue the lost. We got to rescue the person. Oh, Lord, we love you. Come on and praise him like you meet in this house. I am the one. I am the one. This is the place and now is the time. Hallelujah. I am the one. I'm the one. I am the one. I am the one. It's got to stop everything that is in motion and just step up and say, God, I am the one. This is the place, and now is the time. They interviewed those five people. Check this out. 903, 92 passengers. They interviewed the five people that he rescued, and here's what they said. This one, one out of five, but I'll take this one. I honed in on this one. He said these words. Quote, I'm glad I got rescued. Listen to me. But more than anything, I'm glad I've got a chance now to rescue others. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> God said, snatch them out of hell while you can snatch them out of hell. Y'all got me? Look at me. Snatch them out of hell while you can snatch them out of hell. I'm not trying to be a guru up here and be a Jesus Junior, but I do have the Holy Ghost resting in me. I do know the Word of God, and today may be the appointed time for the horn to sound. How many will you take to heaven with you? How many? Only you can answer that. Last night I told you guys to fast and to pray. Fast and pray and do a Bible study with your family because we did not meet here last night. Last night, I got the blessing of setting my daughter in my lap, eight years old. Now she perked up. Hallelujah. And she can testify, and Dana can testify to this. Greg, I had a Bible study with her. I said, Dusty, read John 3, 16 through 18. Read it and read it loud. She read it, and I said, Dusty, what's that mean? I don't know, Daddy. I started explaining to her the Bible, the Word. And I said, Dusty, I want to ask you a question. I know you're eight years old. I said, but what if Daddy told you tonight that I was lost and dying and going to hell? Could you lead me to Jesus? I know a lot of people say, well, Brian, my God. She's eight years old. Hey, if she's old enough to get saved, she's old enough to lead people to Jesus. Amen. Quit giving excuses to live the way you want to live. Never thought I'd have to stand in front of a church and tell a bunch of Christian people not to drink, smoke, chew, and do. Never thought that you had to tell married men not to commit adultery. I never thought I had to stand in front of a church and say that homosexuality is wrong and God hates it. I never thought I'd have to stand in front of people and say and declare that this is the day that the Lord has made and let us be glad and let us rejoice in it. No pastor should ever have to call you and beg you to come to church if you're a saved man or woman of God. You should desire, you should want, you should hunger to be in God's presence. I can't wait to get to church. How about y'all? I can't wait to worship with you. I can't wait to see who's going to get saved today. I can't wait. The problem with the church is that we have become comfortable and casual. And mediocrity satisfies. If one soul, here's what they'll tell you. I've talked to Southern Baptist Convention people all the time. Here's what they'll say. Here's, y'all ready? Well, we, we did better in so-and-so church. I'm like, are you, are you in elementary 
Do we still got high school answers when we're 40, 50, 60, 70 years old? Well, at least we got two. God says, baptize them all. You say, Brian, that's all you talk about. <laughs> that's all that matters. Because if you become a soul winner, you'll be wise. You'll be wise. Destiny looked at me and I said, Destiny, Daddy's lost, dying, going to hell. Can you lead Daddy to Jesus? No. And then I, I trained her. I set her right in front of me and I said, listen to me, here's what you pray. Don't make it complicated. I said, say, dear Lord. Dear Lord. <laughs> and I get on their terms. I'm a stinking mess. I'm a stinking mess. <laughs> but I believe in you. But I believe in you. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. She knew more than I did. Forgive me. Save me. Save me. And teach me to love you. Teach me to love you. And now I said, now. I said, lead daddy to Jesus Christ. And she turned around with a boldness in her. And she took the Bible and read the Bible first. Hallelujah. And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, repeat after me. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sinner. Hey, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm lost. I need a Savior. I need a Savior. Save my soul. Save my soul. And I was born again. <laughs> Woo! Glory, glory. That's how easy it is. My God, they want you to have your Ph.D. anymore. Take a Bible course. They don't, you don't have to do that. I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. Y'all getting it? Are y'all really getting this work? Because here's what is going to happen. You're going to become dangerous. Here's the tragedy. Y'all ready? <laughs> Praise team, you guys can come on. Here's the tragedy. For me and you, and I wrote this down. In this church, listen to me, to be alive, know the Bible, know God's Word, the words you're going to be judged upon, and not put a mark in history, not leave a legacy, not ever lead, lead anybody to Jesus Christ. I think one of the qualifications to be on leadership, you must be a soul winner. They make all these stinking rules. You know, it's amazing. When, when I got judged according to my divorce, there was a comma <laughs> after that. There was a comma. And so I just told the other deacons, I said, here's the deal. I said, you left all nine of them out. You just judged me on one. To be a good ruler of your home. To be a man of integrity, a man of respect, a man of honor. A man that will lead. And isn't it, isn't it amazing the church will take one thing out of the Bible and make, make, a, make, a, make a, a religion out of it? Let me tell you, y'all ready for this? This preacher's going to square you up this morning. Y'all ready? If you are born again and you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you have been forgiven. You have been forgiven. You have been forgiven. Forgiven. I'm going to say it again. Some of you ain't getting this stuff. You're making an excuse. I'm divorced. I can't do it. I've lied. I've done this. You are forgiven. That'll make a Baptist church squirm. Forgiven. Youth, y'all forgiven. The section you're forgiven. You are the one. This is the place, and now is the time. This section, look at me. You are the one. Johnny, you are the one. Barry, you are the one. What if you said these words when Blaze come up to you? I'm not the one. This is not the place. And now is not the time. You're too young. Good job, Barry Wheatley. Because you said, I am the one. This is the place, and now is the time. And because you said that, 
Your son now, hallelujah, is not going to hell. He's not burning in hell. He's going to heaven because a daddy stood up and said, I am the one. This is the place and now is the time. Somebody, come on, stand to your feet in this house. Come on. You got it. Listen to me. This is the truth. What did I get out of this 13 days? You just heard it. I am the one. I am the one. God called me to Elkhorn. This is the place. And I don't have time to wait. Time is running out. Y'all say amen to that. But how much? How many do you believe that? That today your heart could stop. Be faithful. Serve God. Be diligent. Love Him. I told Blake this a thousand and one times. And he knows I'm telling you the truth. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. My son is 21. He's going to be 22 years old. <laughs> I'm proud of him. Because you know what? Here's what blessed me, Paige. We went on vacation last year. And I didn't even have to ask Blake, was you at church? Because I knew where my son would be. So mama, daddy... You may be in some turmoil right now. You may have some opposition right now. You may not be getting your prayers answered just right now. Still, I had to wait a year. But God said, I will be back. So I don't know who I'm ministering to today. But I'm here to tell you on God's appointed time, on God's appointed time, on God's appointed time, you will birth a spiritual concept in your life. You may not just have one. God may say, Lord, I'm going I'm to bless I'm going to double bless her. We prayed for a child. One child. Courtney's got two now. It's amazing. But on God's appointed time. I thought about, here's how critical this is. You know how close that me and Dana came not to getting destiny? I got a phone call. Dana, you remember this? That woman called from our agency where we was going to be adopting. And she said, oh, Brian, check this out. A mom just had a baby. And you were the first one to come to my mind. Would you want this baby? And boy, I got happy. I said, oh, God, this is the one. This is the one. I called Bobby. I called my mom. I called everybody. I said, God. I said, listen, God's going to give us a baby. That woman called me back three days later. She said, Brian, that mama decided to keep her baby. And even though I was upset, I was happy. And then four months later, I got a picture over the internet, Destiny. And one of the beautiful, prettiest little girls Long, I mean, your hair was black like mom and daddy prayed for. Your eyes were all beautiful. Your lips were like, Mwah. And the first thing me and your mama said, my God, I can't wait to kiss those lips. It was her. And all this week, I've been missing things in my life because I wanted it at my time, and it wasn't the appointed time. Is this making sense? Brooke, you, God will only give you what you can handle. That's why God said in Hebrews chapter 10, I'll never give you no more than what you can handle. Your anointing will double. Your blessings will double on your appointed time. You got me? And when that comes, open your mouth and sing. Got me? Gay! I'm going to minister to y'all just a little bit. Four years ago, Oh, devil tried to take you out. You know why you didn't die? It wasn't time. <laughs> it wasn't time. It wasn't time. It wasn't his appointed time. It's appointed unto man wants to die, and then comes the judgment. You have an appointed time in this house right now. Y'all getting this word? It's appointed. That's why I don't care how hard the devil's after you, coach. He can't touch you. He can't have you in Dixie's marriage 
Because why? Your marriage was appointed by God. Hallelujah. On God's appointed time. I know it's tough, sis. Hang in there, hallelujah. I give you this word. I commission this word over your spirit in the name of Jesus. Something. Maybe you're just not ready for what God's going to give you. Whoa, my God. But on God's appointed time. Somebody help me preach. On God's appointed time. He'll raise you, hallelujah, to a level like no other level. You were birthed an Isaac in your life. Oh, you received that? Oh, I received that too. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I feel the Lord. Yeah. My God, if I lose my voice, I'll lose it for the Lord. He can't have my voice. It's appointed for such a time as this. I'm going to ask y'all a question. How many in this section has got the word today? You are the one. Turn your name and say, you are the one. Yeah. This is the place. And now is the time. Yeah. This section, watch me. How many of y'all got the word today? I know it's hot, but it's going to be hotter than hell. Turn your name and say, I am the one. Yeah. This is the place. And now is the time. Y'all got me? I am the one. Come on. I am the one. Y'all are included. This is the place. And now is the time. You crazy bunch of kids. Bunch of radical weirdos for Jesus. Are you ready? Are you the one? I like that. That's confident. Are you the one? Terry, I know you're sitting in the youth section. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, brother. <laughs> you and Jenny. <laughs> Lord, rub off. <laughs> Mix it up. That's great. It's great, man. Mix it up. You're still older than they are, though. Terry, you're the one. Man of God, you are the one. Woman of God, you are the one. This is the place, and now is the time. Y'all got it? Turn to neighbor and say, you are the one. Come on. Come on. Don't you yawn on me, Marcus Kessinger. All right. If you're tired, go to bed earlier. You say, Brian, you called him out. He was yawning. How in the world can you go to sleep? I'm going to stick my finger in his mouth. He does that again. In the name of Jesus, revive him because I'm going to choke him. You're the one. This is the place. And now is the time. And I am the one. I am the one. This is the place and now is the time. Father God, I've delivered the word. And God, I thank you for a woman named Sarah that finally realized that she was the one. So the good news today, Lord, is this. You chose the Elkhorn Baptist Church. We're the one. We're the church. We're the ones that's going to make a difference. And this is the place and now is the time. Blessed as we go into invitation, God, maybe somebody needs to rededicate their life. Maybe somebody needs to be saved in this house. Maybe you've never been baptized in this house. You need to get baptized. So, Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, this cross is open. It's open. Maybe you have some things in your life that you're just not settled with. You say, man, I am the one. Randy, you know nobody else can leave your house but like, like you can? Nobody. Because you two are married under God's witness. Y'all were appointed for marriage. Y'all were appointed to have a godly home. And nobody can leave that house like you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So guys, wherever you're at, I'm done. I want you to get this word. I hope it, hope it rains in your spirit. Rain in the spirit, God. Could you imagine, Bob? Could you imagine if this word gets in our spirit? No more excuses. I am the one. Wes, you are the one. And this is the place and now is the time. In Jesus' name. Y'all come.